Timothy chapter 3. Can you stand when you find it? 1 Timothy chapter 3. Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. Praise the Lord. Paul said, These things write I unto thee. He's talking to Timothy, the pastor of a church in Ephesus, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. There is a proper way to behave in the house of God. Which is the church. What is the house of God? It is the church of the living God. Amen. That means if this is the church of the living God, we will take care of it, correct? Right. Amen. Or to keep it clean. Right. Amen. So somebody can get them spider webs out of the men's bathroom that's been on the wall for five Amen. months. I've been waiting for somebody to get them all. He said, Preacher, why ain't you done it? Come to cure to see if anybody's going to do anything. Right. They've been on the wall for five months. Hmm. Mm. And notice. This is the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, that was his first coming, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, and preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Look at chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. It's my hope. I don't know about your hope. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith. Paul personally won Timothy to the Lord. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that my, thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Amen. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions, rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. You have a seat. Amen. <clears throat> Paul was talking to young Timothy, a convert of Paul the Apostle directly, and he... Uh, is teaching him, he's given him instruction that's given to him by the Lord about how to do things in the church. And here's a pastor who's seeking instruction from an apostle. And he's getting exactly what he needs. And he says, there's a proper way um, that the house of God is supposed to be run. There's a proper way that the church of the living God is supposed to be done. There's a proper way uh, for things uh, in choosing a church. If the church is supposed to be run a certain way, there's certainly um, things about a church that you should know about uh, in looking for a church and not looking for a church as far as leaving a church. And that's kind of what I want to teach on this morning or preach is that six biblical reasons, and obviously when I say six, that means I won't get through this. Uh, six biblical reasons, it'll probably be in six parts. Six <laughs> biblical reasons to leave your church. Okay? Six biblical reasons to leave your church. You said, preacher, you trying to get somebody to leave? No. Sure, certainly not trying to get somebody to leave. I'm trying to get you to come. Uh, I'm trying to get you, if you're not a member, to join, if that's the Lord's will. But there's a lot of reasons that people give over the course of the years I've read and heard, and you've heard some too, that people leave church or why they pick a church. And some are biblical and some are not. Right. And there are some biblical reasons to leave a church. And there are biblical reasons to pick a church. There are also biblical reasons not to pick a church. And so you need to know some of those things. And I'm certainly not going to uh, be covering every uh, one of those um, this morning because there's just way too many. And I'm not going to be covering them in the course of several weeks or several messages. And so you got to realize, you know, some people believe that all churches are the same. You know, uh, that's what some people believe. They believe, well, just because uh, they have a steeple on the church. Well, therefore, that's a church. Well, that's not true. Right. That's not true at all. A steeple does not make a church. Right. Uh, just 
um, because um, it's got a pulpit and they have a preacher and just because they might have deacons and a, uh, a short church order of things doesn't mean that it is a church. All Amen. churches are not the same. Jesus. And if you don't know that, then as you grow up, you will. You'll see there is a difference. Right. And not only what they teach, but in a lot of different things. But choosing a church, choosing a church is one of the most important decisions that you will make as a as an individual, as a parent, as a husband and wife. Uh, you uh, picking a church or choosing a church is uh, second to getting saved and getting married is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Right. It should not be taken haphazardly or um, with no prayer and consideration, it, but should be taken take with the utmost uh, sincerity and, and seriousness in a person's life. Now, every person, you know, a lot of people think, well, well, so-and-so, they left this church, so they must be in sin. That is not true. Just because someone leaves a church doesn't mean there's something wrong with the church, and it don't mean there's something wrong with the person. Right. Well, we left the church. Right. When we was in North Carolina. Were we in sin? Uh, were has anybody ever left the church other than me and Beth? Anybody ever left? Yeah, amen. Is everybody always in sin? Was you mm. always in sin? No. I would suspect not. Was you perfect? No. Was there ne something necessarily wrong with the church as far as doctrine? I know you might disagree with some. I ain't talking about that. Right. That don't mean the church was Satan's church. Right. It mean maybe you had disagreement. Maybe there was good reason. Maybe you moved. Maybe God called you somewhere else. God does that, you know, right. uh, and sometimes for no reason. Uh, we don't always understand that. So every person who leaves this church or any church is not necessarily in sin or out of God's will. Now, Brother Bryant asked a question this morning. We're going to get to here in just a minute. And I'll um, try to uh, tell you that in just a minute if I don't forget. Now, I will tell you this as a way of introduction. I believe three things. If you're going to leave a church and you've been going there for some time, I believe three things, and this ain't got to do with the message really. Um, if you're going to leave a church, I think that you ought to do three things first. First of all, pray. Amen. Right? You ought to seriously pray before you leave a church uh, concerning God's will about you leaving. And in that regard, you need to make sure that you're leaving based on biblical reasons. Or God's moving right. you somewhere, or, or something of that nature. Talking about, uh, I know from what I understand, Dina was thinking about maybe moving this direction. Uh, if she moves this direction, I'm assuming she's not going to go to the church there at Warner Robin. If if you move to a different area, sometimes people move because of jobs. I personally think sometimes that's a bad idea. Uh, I don't think you ought to move and follow the money. You ought to follow where God wants. Right. You know, Amen. Right. Amen. In my opinion. Um, some people they're in a good church, their family's in it, their children's in it, growing, and things are going good. And, and because the job wants them to move to California so they can make ten dollars more per hour, well, this is the best thing for my family. Well, you better make sure there's a good church there for right. your family before you move to an area. Right. And it's all God forsaken and wicked as hell, and there's right. nothing there for your family. Right. What would be better for your family? Make ten more dollars per hour, or that they get fed spiritually. Right. Amen. They get fed. Right. Amen. Amen. God will take care of you. Amen. 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 You don't follow the money. <laughs> right. Whatever. Amen. The, what is it? Money is the root of all evil. Right. Yeah, for the love so of be money. careful of Amen. that. But you need to certainly pray about it. The same thing I think you ought to do is that you ought to talk with your pastor. Right. If he's, right. if he's a person that you can approach. Now, you know, some pastors, you can't approach them. <laughs> you cannot approach about leaving a church. Right. Because they're going to ban you. They're going to uh, hang out your laundry. In right. church, you know, they're going to string up loud across there. They're going to name all your sins and how wicked you are and how, how sinful you are. And that's just not right. Right. And then they're going to tell all the congregation, you can't contact them. Don't you talk to them. Mm -hmm. You see them, just leave going. I've left churches before. I know. Right. <laughs> and the pastor, he gets up, and I've had friends in church tell me that, man, the preacher said this, and he said that, and he did this. That's just wrong. That's right. not a way to treat your brother and sister in Christ. Amen. Even if they are wrong, there still ain't a way to treat somebody. Like amen. Right. Uh, one day you might be in the same boat and you want somebody to treat you as a right. Amen. And love right. And gentleman. But another thing you ought to do is that you ought to certainly seek counsel. Seek counsel. Seek God to counsel. Yeah. Not just counsel. You can find counsel on the field of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
And what's that other new doctor thing? You know, what, Dr. Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil yeah. And you can, oh, you talk about that kind of stuff. I'm yeah. talking about godly counsel. Amen. I'm talking about godly counsel. I'm not talking about worldly counsel. I'm talking about godly counsel. Amen. And I ain't talking about go where you know the an- what the answer is going to be. Either. Right. That's not godly counsel. Amen. Amen. In fact, it'd be better if you went somewhere that you know is going to disagree with you. Right. Get their counsel. Right. Get their counsel. But anyway, but if you do leave a church, you should try and leave on good terms. Now, I will tell you, personally, I have left churches on bad terms, okay? I'll be honest with you. When I've been younger and all, I've left churches on bad terms, and I was wrong. Right. I have left churches on good terms, and the church was wrong. I have left churches on good terms, and the pastor was wrong, Okay. So I've been in all three scenarios. I've left churches in on, on good terms. And everything was good and rosy, and I can welcome back and everything wonderful. That's okay too. That's the best way to leave. Right. Uh, now the reasons that I'm going to give you are not your obvious reasons. Some of them are obvious reasons, but they're not going to be things such as catching the the, the finding the pastor in adultery or child molestation or stealing money out of the out of the pool uh, or the, out of the plates or Nothing like that. We're not talking about those types of things. We're going to talk about some other things. And um, one of them was asked this morning from Brother Brian, which was a good question. If you don't come to Sunday school, then you ought to come. We have a lot of good comments and questions, and we talk about things and a little bit different than the preaching. And, and so uh, I encourage you to come out to Sunday school. The first reason, first biblical reason, the first biblical reason, that I, one of the first biblical reasons that I would pick a church, and, and, and as well, this isn't just leaving a church, it's how to pick a church. If you're looking for a church home, these ought to be high on your list, very high, in saying, does this church that I'm looking at, does it fit this? And what I'm going to give you, and what I'm going to give you, <coughs> fits the Word of God. Okay, and I'll show that to you. First of all, Six biblical reasons to leave a church. First one, if the church uses a perversion or correct the King James Bible. Amen. If the church uses a perversion or correct the King James Bible. Now, this is one of my favorite subjects to preach on. Right. Is it, well, you're going to preach on a whole lot. Well, go for it. But hopefully you're going to have me more than a year. And you'll hear at least two or three messages. Okay? Amen. And so, I uh, appreciate it, Brother Brandon. And so, uh, got one amen. I guess I'll be here too much longer than a year. Uh, anyways, I better go ahead and get them in. Amen. So, I will, uh, as I said when I first came here, I will only use, in our church, as long as I'm pastor, right. will only use the King James Bible amen. in every aspect of its ministry. Amen. Every Sunday school, everything we print, amen. Uh, everything that we might put out in, on CD or DVD or anything else. Amen. It's all going to be King James Bible. I don't care if it's a part of a verse or, or all of a verse or whatever it is, it's going to be correct. Amen. Preach it, preacher. It, and it's going to be correct. It's going to be King James. It's not going to be the NIV or the New King James or the RSV or Amen. the ASV. It's not going to be the Hope and Christian Standard Bible. It's not going to be Nestle's <laughs> um, Greek um, text. It's not going to be Westcott and Hort. Right. It's not going to be anything but the King James Bible. Amen. It's not going to be the text Amen. of Receptus either. Amen. It's going to be the King James Amen. Bible. Amen. Right. And so, if you don't like that, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm not right. trying to offend you. And if I have offended you by saying that simple thing, then you need to go and listen to the message I preached uh, was it last week on Psalm 119, 165. <laughs> Amen. Right. In context that the Word of God offends me. Right. And we're going to look at and see what God says about the Word of God. Amen. His words and His Word. First of all, we know, according to the Bible, that God cannot lie. Amen. God cannot lie. The Bible tells us that. Now, God made a statement. Don't you turn over to Matthew 4 4. Matthew 4 4. We're going to look and see what Jesus said, the Son of God, God in the flesh, and God Himself said about His words. Now, this issue concerning the Bible, some people ask, no big deal. It is a very big deal. Amen. If you don't have the words of God, then you don't have giving. Amen. And they're not powerful. They're not sharper than any two-edged sword. Not even, even to save somebody, in my opinion. In Matthew 4, 4, this is when Jesus had just come down, was led up of the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil in verse 1. This is when Satan comes to him and he begins to tempt him. In verse 3, and when the tempter came to him, he said... Talking to Jesus, 
If thou be the Son of God, he knows he is the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. He's saying, hey, here's the first temptation. He's, a, he's appealing to his flesh. He's, ah, you're hungry. He's gone 40 days, 40 nights, and uh, he had not ate nothing and, and, and so forth, and he's hungry. And he says, hey, why don't you make these stones turn to bread? That way you can eat. But, in verse 4, he, talking about Jesus Christ, answered and said, it is written. Amen. Notice every time Amen. he faces Satan, he says, it is written. Amen. He uses the Old Testament to, to defeat the devil. And that's right. what you should do. The Old right. Testament, New Testament, all of right. it. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone. How many of you are men? Even all y'all women here are talking about the same thing. Amen. Still talking about men and women here. Right. Man or woman here shall not live by bread alone. Well, what is he supposed to live by? Talking yeah. about your physical body there. You can't just live with uh, physically, but you got to live by something else if you're saved, if you're a child of God, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word. Notice it doesn't just say word of God. Right. It didn't just say some of the words or part of the words. It said every word of God. Now, if Jesus said <laughs> to Satan, and he says to us in this verse, is saying that every word of God <laughs> is what man needs to live. And if that's what he needs to live, and I've given it to him, and I'm going to show you that. He said, I have given it to him, then God would be a liar if we were missing some words. Right, right? amen. But we're not missing any words as right. right. Let's look and see what else um, he has to say. Uh, I think I'm in the right spot. I hope I am. If you'll notice, he said there, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word. He every. didn't say every phrase. He didn't say every sentence. Amen. He didn't say every verse. He said every word. Amen. The fact is, God believes that every word is important. Right. Amen. Every word is important. Amen. Therefore, we have every word, and every word is perfect from God. We're not missing any words. Right. We don't need to add any word. We don't need to take any word. Amen. Because Amen. if we believe what Jesus said here, and what I'm fixing to show you. Amen. Then, if we believe that, then we know that we have God's word. Therefore, we don't need man's input. Not only every word, but every part of a letter. Right. Now, I didn't say every letter, but every part every of a letter. And tittle. Amen. Okay. Let's look at Matthew chapter 5. It goes a whole lot further than saying every word is important. But every part of a letter, every part, and I will show you those parts. In Matthew chapter 5, in verse 17. Amen. Jesus here is talking and he says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Jesus did not come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. The law is still today for someone, not us in the church, it's for the Jews during the tribulation and right. the millennium. Or the prophets, I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Amen. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one job or one tittle Amen. showing no wise pass Amen. from the law till all be fulfilled. Amen. Let me give you something before I talk about the job and the tittle. Now, verse 17 shows that the Old Testament was fulfilled in Jesus Christ himself. Now, verse 18 also teaches that the Old Testament prophecy does not end with his first coming. Right. It does not end. In fact, there are, I think it's um, 690 verses that have not been fulfilled in Scripture today. Mm. Right. But there's hundreds that have. Right. Amen. That's proof that this is the Word of God. Right. A lot of people say, well, you know, like this over, what is it, Peter, to say, well, we've been hearing about the second coming. We've been hearing about his coming, and nothing has changed. You just hold on. It's not true. Right. We're not at the end of the book yet. Right. And 690 verses have yet to been fulfilled as prophecy. Amen. But it will. Amen. Every one before has been fulfilled. Hundreds and hundreds. Over the thousands of years by different authors who didn't know each other, wrote about the same events, and they all took place, just like they were said. Now, now heaven and earth doesn't pass away until 2 Peter chapter 3 and Revelation 20. 
And that's all still future. Right. And it says here that every jot and every tittle will be fulfilled. Every jot and every tittle. Well, let's look at what, first of all, a jot is. Turn over to Psalms 119. Let me show it to you. Assuming that you have the right kind of Bible. Amen. Because every King James Bible does not have this in it. In verse 73. If you look at Psalms 119, now hold your hand up if you have the divisions. What is it? Every, what is it? Nine, eight verses. And you have the Hebrew word or the Hebrew letter. And then you have the Greek, or the, it's written in English, I'm sorry. How you pronounce it? How many have that? You have the Hebrew letter. Okay? I got some letter, I don't know what it is. Right. Okay. Do you see that little J O D, John, mm -hmm. beside the Hebrew letter? Right. Above verse 73. Do you see the little mark there before it that looks like right. a comma? Right. That is a jot in the Hebrew language. Okay. Right. Now. The tittle is found at verse one at verse sixty-five. You see that teeth, T E T H. I guess that's how you pronounce that. T E T H. Everybody see that? And you see the Hebrew letter beside it that they're pronouncing in in, in English. Do you see the little parts of that that points up like a horn or like a crown? Those little tips. Okay. That, my friend, is the tittle. God says those little tips on the on the top of that letter, right. the very tips of those letters are going to be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Everything's going to be fulfilled. So not only is every word, but every jot and every tittle of every Hebrew letter is going to be fulfilled in, before the earth passes away. Now God made a promise and he's going to fulfill it. Right. And he did. Turn over to John chapter 17, which is the true Lord's Prayer. It is not my Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That is not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord would never pray and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus would never say that. He was perfect. Why would he ask God to forgive him? Amen. He would not. That is not the Lord's Prayer. That's what people have been taught, but that's not the Lord's Prayer. Here's the Lord's Prayer in... John chapter 17. Verse 1 it says, These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And it continues. But look at verse 8. And in this whole chapter is the Lord's Prayer. In verse 8, Jesus is still praying to the Father. He says, For I have given unto them the words. Not word, the words. Words here are what? They're plural. Right. They're not singular. Singular is one, the word as a whole. No. He said, I've not given them the word as a whole. Yeah, he has. But he's saying in more detail, he said, I've given them the very words that they can live by because man cannot live by bread alone. Amen. Right. He needs every word, and I have given them the words which thou gavest me. We don't need to get them from a scholar. We don't need to get them from uh, people that don't believe the Bible and Bible correctors and translators. Amen. We don't need to get them from any other place. He goes on to say, which thou gavest me, and they have received them. So we have them. Right. Where are they? I got them right up here. Right. right. Amen. And have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didn't send me. Now, that's very plain to a person who believes the Bible. Right. But a scholar, he'll try to question it away, talk it away. But Jesus said every word, I'm sorry, words. He said every, the words. And they have them. Now, look at verse 14. Verse 14. Now, here, in verse 14, he does say, I have given them thy word, meaning as a whole. Right. But in verse 8, he says, I've given them the very words. Right. So as a whole, yes, from the Father, we have the word of God. Amen. 
and we have the words of God. Because you can go to a Bible cracker and you'll say, oh, I believe the Bible is the Word of God. And that sounds pretty good. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. But then you can take him to 1 John 5, 7. You can take him to uh, Timothy, what is it, uh, 3, 16, 1 Timothy 3, 16, and say, do you believe that word is the word of God? Uh, well, no, not that word. Right. No, not that word. Well, then you don't believe the Bible is the word of God. Right. They believe that. This is what they believe. They believe this book contains the word of God. Right. Or this book is the word of God. Right. Every word of it. Right. It don't contain it. And if it contained it, that means some of it's good, some of it's true, and some of it's false. Right. But the fact is, every word, the these and the thou's, he's and all of it, he Amen. is the word of God. Right. You know, about these and thou's, I preach on that sometimes. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them. He's talking to God the Father. Amen. Jesus still is in his prayer. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Thy word is true. Right. Amen. This, what he gave us. Right. It's truth. Jesus is stating that the words in verse 8 are the words of God, and they are truth, which is able to sanctify us. Now, the word sanctify means to purge, cleanse, make pure, and separate. That's why the perversions don't work. Right. Because they're not true. Right. Right. Yeah, they contain part of the gospel. They contain portions of truth, but it's not all truth. Right. It's not all truth. Here, we have all the truth. Amen. That's why the newspaper can't sanctify us. Right. That's why Shakespeare can't sanctify us. It's God's truth that sanctifies a person in a sinner. It's not what man says. It's what God has given us, and it's truth. It will sanctify us. That's why the Bible correctors don't like the King James Bible. Right. Because it, it convicts them. Right. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It yeah. cuts both ways. It's coming and going. Right. It's stick you, and they don't like it. Amen. Right. It cuts them up. They hate it. John chapter 3, verse 34. Turn there. John chapter 3, verse 34. says again for he whom God has sent who did God send Jesus for he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God so the words again that Jesus spoke were the very words of God if you're in doubt turn over to John chapter 6 verse 63 John chapter 6 verse 63 It says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, the words, not the word, the words, the very words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that Jesus spoke were alive. They were powerful. That's why the Bible correctors don't like the Bible we have. Right. They want to change it because it convicts them and it's talking about them in lots of places in Scripture Right. that mess with this book and God says leave it alone. Yeah, right. Amen. <laughs> Psalms 119, 89. Psalms 119, verse 89. It says in verse 89, Psalm 119, forever. Now, how long is that? That's forever. forever. That's forever. In the Hebrew, it means forever. Amen. In the Greek, it means forever. Amen. forever. In the Latin, it means forever. The English, Amen. it means forever. The German, the Russian, Chinese, Japanese. Whatever. Amen. It means forever. O Lord, David said, thy word as a whole is settled in heaven. Now, if God's word is settled in heaven, why ain't it settled on earth? <laughs> right. Because man has dealings. Right. Man's got Amen. His Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. That shows us 
that the Bible as a whole has been settled in heaven as long as God has been in heaven. Now, how long has God been in heaven? Right. In the beginning, God. Amen. The heaven. The heaven, not heavens. The perversion says heavens. It's not heavens. It's heaven. Talking about the third heaven. As long as God's been in Amen. heaven, the third heaven, in the beginning. You say, what is that? I don't know. Talk to him about it when you see him. Amen. It's, it's longer than we've been around, though. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's been settled. Amen. Now, God's had it all these time, all this time. Do you really think, you know, if you go to any, quote, Christian bookstore, right. or if you get online and start searching, there's about 300 different Bibles. I have a, right at 100 different Bibles. Some of you have never heard. Anybody heard of the Bible and Rhyme? Mm -hmm. It's a strange word. Anybody heard of the Prince's Diary Bible? Mm -hmm. It's a Bible for um, homosexuals. Mm -hmm. uh, Bible and Rhyme and the Green Bible. You've heard of the Green Bible. They don't ever read them. Yeah. I got over 100 different perversions. He said, why you got all that? You read them? You study them? No, it should show they're false. Right. Someone says, well, this Bible's pretty good. That's I got right here. I show you where it takes out the deity. I show right, you right. It says, um, um, Jesus, um, Lucifer is now Jesus Christ. I, I can go right to it. Right. Do you really think God in heaven has 300 perversions up there list going across there? And say, well, we got it's settled in heaven. Look, it, it says something different over there. And the Living Bible says over here. And, and the New Living Translation says this. And the New King James says that. And the Old right. Christian Standard Bible says that. And do you really think that? Oh, well, there's several books in heaven, but it ain't the New King James. It ain't the Texas Receptus. It ain't the Hebrew and the Greek from uh, Nassau's Island or anybody else. In my opinion, this is my opinion. You like it a lot. It's the King James. Amen. It's the King James. Now, it might be written in Hebrew, but it matches this book. Right. I got it in English. Right. So, right. How do you know Jesus spoke in, um, Hebrew? I ain't got time to go on all that. You look where God spoke. It's always in Hebrew. It's always in Hebrew. When he first spoke in the Old Testament, it was in Hebrew. When he spoke in the New Testament, it was in Hebrew. <coughs> Man. It's always Hebrew. It says that God made Israel, and they spoke Hebrew, and that was his people. They spoke what? Hebrew. Amen. We have the Bible given to us in English. Now, God certainly is a better translator than we are. Amen. Now, Turn over to Matthew 24, 35. Matthew 24, 35. Three times in Scripture, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, this verse is repeated three times. <coughs> Amen. Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, and they will, over in Peter and Revelation. But my words... My words <coughs> shall not pass away. Right. God's words have not passed away. Amen. Right. These words. Amen. The words that gave Moses, they haven't passed away. I got them right here. Right. The words that gave David, they haven't passed away. I got them right here. Right. The words that gave Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel and Micah and Hosea and, and Daniel, they're right here. They haven't passed away. The words that gave Paul and Peter and John and Luke and Matthew and Mark, I got them right here. They haven't passed away. Right. I got the words of Jesus. Amen. They haven't passed away at all. Amen. It's been 6,000 years. I've got them all. Amen. Right. Every single one of them. Amen. I ain't missing one. Amen. I ain't missing one letter. Amen. If right. there's a, a, something wrong, it's because of the printer of this publication did. Right. I got nothing to do with God. Right. Amen. Matthew 24, 35 teaches us that God's word, not word, shall never pass away. But his words make up his word. Luke chapter 9. Turn to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Verse 26 is a warning. Better take heed. It says, chapter 9, verse 26, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me mm. and of my words. God puts them on the same scale, don't he? Yeah. Right. God and his word, they're on the same, same level. Of him, that person that's ashamed of him, are his words, shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Who's the Son of Man? Jesus Christ. When he shall come in his glory, when is he coming in his glory? At the second advent. Right. 
That's when he's coming in his glory. He didn't come in his glory the first time. No right. glory. He died on a cross. He Amen. A cross of shame. He's going to come in his glory and in his fathers and all of the holy angels. Now, that's a warning here. We better not be ashamed of God's word. Amen. Right. We better not uh, make it look pretty and say, oh yeah, I love God's, God's word. Oh, I believe the Bible. It ain't, I believe the Bible. I believe the words of this book. Amen. Right. If you're ever talking to somebody and they say, well, yeah, you know, I, I, I like King James. Do you believe this word? How about this one? One that says blood. Right. Well, it's supposed to be dead. No, it's not supposed to be dead. It's supposed to be blood. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it says, um, I like the modern versions because they update it. Right. And, and, and they make it more real and more uh, contemporary. And, uh, it does. How many times has anybody ever heard somebody say, won't you go to Hades? Because <laughs> that's what they do. They take the word hell. Right. Amen. They say, won't you go to hell? Right. Won't you go to hell? They don't say, won't you go to hell? Hades or Shoal. They don't say right. that. He never heard that. I ain't never heard it. I'm 46. Fix to be 47. I don't know who's the oldest person here. We ain't going to ask. But they get in trouble doing that. But I guarantee you, problem. You never heard anybody say, won't you go to Hades? Right. right. It's always, you go to hell. Right. right. You say, preacher, you cuss them? No, I'm trying to make a point. Right. The Bible, they're not trying to update, did they? You take all them new perversions. They got more complicated words in there that nobody knows what the heck right. they're talking about. Right. Then this King James Bible. And I can prove it. Right. Turn to John 8 47. Should be about there. We're almost there. At least, at least with the first part of the first message. <laughs> we're going to finish up tonight. John chapter 8, verse 47. I'm still in the loop. There we are. Okay. John 8, 47 says, He that is of God, praise God, heareth God's words. So, you know, right there, if you got a problem with somebody don't believe this book right here, they don't have God. Amen. Right. It's very plain. Right. He that is of God, heareth God's words. They say something like, well, I don't believe every word. I remember one year, I forgot who it was, I might remember. They were doing the um, political debate, the presidential debate. And who was that? They asked me the question, do you believe the King James Bible is the Word of God? I got it on tape. And I forgot which speaker it was. I'm going to say George Bush in his big mouth. <laughs> I think it was, but I might be wrong. I said, do you believe this is the Word of God? He said, well, I don't believe every word. Mm -hmm. He's in big trouble. All right, right. Mm -hmm. And he seemed like they, uh, someone might have asked a question about Jonah. Well, I, or he might have said something about, well, I don't really know if Jonah was swallowed by the whale. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what you call a Bible corrector. And they don't believe the word of God. Right. It says, he that is of God heareth God's word. <clears throat> Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Amen. Now, we'll stop there. Tonight I'm going to give you five facts about our King James Bible. Nice. Brother Brian asked the question, what should you do if you go to a church and they start using a perversion? Or if you're considering a church, I'll turn the question around, if you're considering a church and they don't believe the King James Bible, to me it's not an option. Right. They don't believe the King James Bible. Yep. Get it. Amen. Okay. I'm out. Praise the Lord. I'm out the door. nothing to pray about. Nothing to talk about. Nothing to negotiate. We ain't right. negotiating. We ain't praying about it. The only thing I would do if I went to a church and I've been going there and they started using a perversion, I would go to the pastor if it was approachable. Some pastors are not approachable, as I said. I would go to him and maybe you don't know about it. Could be a Sunday school teacher. It could be something in printed material. That's why I don't like giving out the daily bread. Right. Because they don't use the King James anymore. That's why I don't like mm -hmm. no water program. Because they don't use the King James Bible anymore. Right. Um, they give you options. I don't want options. I want the King James Bible. Right. That's why I want um, them guys that came in here. It's nice to them about the Gideons. and They want to come up here. And they want to do their spill. And they want to take up a love offering so they can you know, um, give out these little Bibles. And that's all well and good if they do the King James. Right. right. But they will do the NIV and the New King James, and I'm not into that. Right. right. Uh, not into that at all. But I think if you were going to a church and they started using uh, in a Sunday school class or a Bible study, I think you would approach the pastor and say, listen, I don't know if you know this is going on, 
But in the Bible study, in Sunday school, in this printed material, I don't know if you know it, but it's not quoting the King James. If right. he says, well, that's no big deal. We've started taking a new approach. You might say, well, I disagree with that. And if you continue that, I'm going to probably leave your church. I think that's what you're doing. Right. You're going to take a stand. Right. Because, see, you'll start affecting his, um, what you call it. <laughs> right. If enough people take a stand, right. people will change it and get their attention. Right. If enough Baptist churches win the water program. See, the water program used to only use the King James. Right. But they made a change mm. right? because of pressure. If enough Baptist churches, and obviously Iwana's going to have no doctrinal statement really because they'll go to anything. Right. They'll go to anything. Um, they, they have no guidelines. But when they change perversion to a perversion, if enough Baptist churches that had enough backbone, enough pastors that stood behind the pulpit and had enough of backbone to take a stand and say, we'll pull out, we'll do something else. Right. If several hundred of those or a thousand of those had done right. that, they would have thought second before doing that. Right. They would have said, maybe we shouldn't do this. He said, well, that's not a good reason to change. But it would get their attention yeah. and they wouldn't change. Right. So if you had a pastor that did that and he said, well, I think we're going to continue this direction, then in my opinion, based on Scripture, you should leave. Right. right. And you said, well, preacher, nowhere <coughs> in the Bible does it say the King James. Well, you're right. It don't say the King James. They don't say it anywhere. It won't find it. Right. But the King James Bible has been proven over the years. The manuscripts back it up. There's over 5,000 manuscripts that back up the King James and only 30-something that back up all the other perversions. There's also a such a thing as faith. Right. There's such a thing as faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. God did not write 300 Bibles. Right. He said, I have given them my word. Right. They need every word to live by. And, and Father, I've given them the words. They have them. They have received them. We have them. Right. It's not a guesswork. It's not a guessing game. Right. We have them. Amen. The question is, do we believe them? Right. The Amen. Right. Amen. Most people don't believe them, so therefore they want to rewrite them. Right. right. But we have God's word. Amen. There's no doubt about that. Amen. It's proven all through history. It's been tried seven times, if you know anything about, and I'm going to show you this tonight. In Proverbs, in um, Psalms chapter 12, it's been tried seven times. Right. The number of perfection and completion. This is the seventh rendition. Right. God has, I guess what you call progressive revelation, that's what you call it. Amen. God has improved it, and it's perfect now, the seventh time. I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe. I don't care. Won't change my mind at all. Won't Amen. hurt my feelings. Amen. I love you to death. Either way. Amen. But I still believe this book. Right. Right. I believe this book. So let's stand. First biblical reason. I leave a church. If I get up there one day and I start using the NIV, the men need to pull me aside immediately. The preacher, when you talk to me, don't let me get through the sermon. I'll tell you what to do with me. If I ever go haywire and go stupid, Pull me in there. If I won't go in there, you pick me up, take me in there. Say, preacher, this is it. If you go keep doing that, we're going to get rid of you. That's it. We'll vote today. Amen. That's fine. That's what you ought to do. You ought to vote me right out. Right. Okay? That's what you ought to do. If you're looking for a church and they don't, they're not solid on the King James, Amen. Forget it. Right. I have found out if a person is not solid on this King James Bible, they're all somewhere else in other right. Yeah. That's what I found. Every single time. I don't care who it is. I don't know. I don't care how good they are. I don't care how big of a heart they have right. for people. I don't care how good of a soul winner they are. If they're not right on this book, I guarantee you there's some other doctrine right. they are incorrect on. Right. And therefore, I don't want them teaching my kids. Right. I don't want them teaching my wife. I don't want them teaching me astray on any doctrine. Right. Amen. Now, with that said, we don't see you back tonight and we'll know you left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs>